watu kama sisi wenyewe tuko na mimba ndio tunaweza pata hiyo covid 19 haraka let me say this uh, this pregnancy is very tough especially now that um, uh, there's the pandemic it's stressful and you have to take it now when we divert all the oxygen to treat covid what happens to the infant who needs oxygen what are the side effects of getting this job and you're not only making a decision for yourself you're doing it for the baby too Maternal health, this is the well-being of the mother during and after pregnancy. And child health is also uh, the well-being of uh, the baby while they are an infant up to uh, adolescence. The uh, well-being of the mother and the baby is important because, uh, in, in, as, in an aspect of mental, social, physical uh, way. They are, they are supposed to be you know, well in all those aspects. Maternal health is about people choosing when to deliver children. Uh, choosing um, to go to clinics for antenatal care, choosing where to deliver, uh, and all that. So there are a lot of things when you talk about maternal health. And uh, the girl-child education contributes a lot. Uh, income to families contributes a lot on how those decisions are made. The empowerment of women, a woman just being able to make decisions about her sexuality. All those things matter. Uh, issues around family planning, do matter as well. You need to have a functioning facility, you also need to have a, a skilled uh, care attendance. In skilled care attendance you will need to have people who will who will sit down and you know take you through pregnancy, teach you about, uh, give you health talks, teach you about birth, birth plans, teach you about the danger signs in pregnancies that uh, in case you see this while you're at home, you, you need to come to the facility and get uh, assisted in such an area. The health of women, mothers and children is a very fundamental and key area to invest and focus in. This reduces mortality rate, helping attain the Sustainable Development Goal by 2030, which is a very critical global health priority. The third Sustainable Development Goal aims to reduce global maternal mortality to less than 70 per 100,000 live births by 2030. Under the same goal, member countries, Kenya included, aim to reduce preventable deaths of newborns to at least 12 per 1,000 live births and children under 5 years of age to 25 per 1,000 live births. This is measured by, for example, how many women unfortunately pass away during childbirth, and such like things, eh? how I many get significant complications when delivering, how, how, how healthy are the children or babies when they are born, are there any babies who pass away soon after birth. We've seen uh, reductions in maternal mortality, uh, we've seen increase in uptake of family planning, we've seen increase in rates of safe delivery, uh, maternal uh, morbidity, has gone down quite dramatically. Uh, even child mortality and infant mortality have been improving over the last many years. In the last 10 to 15 years, Kenya has made great milestones in advancement of maternal and child health. However, there were already risks to these milestones. With COVID-19, these risks might have widened, therefore compromising Kenya's target for maternal and child health. We were on a good trajectory. I think we've done very well compared even to our neighbors. Mm -hmm. But now when COVID came, I think everything has been disrupted. And at this point, the disruption is so much so that we don't even know what it is because we've not collected data very well. What we know is that things are not as before and they are not better than before. They can only be worse. In the wake of COVID-19, all efforts and energy were channeled to the pandemic, pushing other essential services like maternal and child health to the edge. COVID-19 then took a toll on maternal and child health, putting the lives of mothers and children at risk. We've not said we will not um, spend money for maternal health on COVID. We will not uh, spend resources, human resources, that were meant to manage maternal and child health uh, on COVID. You found that a lot of hospitals had to create space 
for or isolation wards for COVID patients. You found that a lot of staff had to be sort of diverted towards taking care of COVID patients. And that reduced the number of clients who were visiting the facilities. And most of the clients even who are coming here to our facility, they were coming from other facilities where they will report that they were told they just uh, they go this month to the facility for the ANC clinics and then they skip like two months or two visits, then they go for the other. Maternal and child health could be at a breaking point in this pandemic. As much as the rules to prevent the spread of COVID-19 are beneficial, in some cases, they compromised maternal and child health services. This is CFK's Tabitha Maternity Home under the primary health care program. This facility is providing maternal and child health care services in Kibra. Through it, we understand the importance of maternal and child health, as well as the gaps in service delivery that came with the COVID-19 pandemic. Take you through pregnancy, teach you about, uh, give you health talks, teach you about birth, birth plans, teach you about the danger signs in pregnancies. That uh... Florence Maluda is a senior nurse here. She has provided services to mothers during this pandemic. With the help of other healthcare workers in this facility, her aim is to protect the lives of mothers and their children. Above all, finances, we cannot uh, say we need the money more than how we need to assist this mother. The mother and the baby comes first. Deep breaths have proven to improve circulation of blood for pregnant women and their unborn babies. Nurse Florence tells me that with masks on, it becomes a challenge for pregnant women to breathe, especially when in labor. A mother comes in labor. They, yes, they were having, you know, they had put their masks on, but now they have been admitted and they are in the labor room. Uh, really, you get a mother who is in labor having those deep breaths, putting their masks on. Yes, you will insist for them to put it on, but most of them, they, they need those, that air, breathing in and out, breathing in and out, exchange of air. And uh, if you are a nurse who does not put your mask on, you will definitely get affected. Remember, uh, COVID is coming uh, in a situation where some of us don't have those symptoms. So we will get uh, clients who are breathing in and out. And we, we are learning now that COVID is being transmitted. You know, it's like an airborne uh, thing. So breathing in and out techniques and this mother you're handling uh, in labor up to delivery and even after delivery, that's when now they are comfortable putting their mask on when they have their baby, they are carrying their baby. Now, service delivery has a great impact on maternal and child health. When the services are slow and poor, the health of the mother and child is compromised. And therefore, to provide quality maternal and child health services, the well-being of the healthcare worker is a key factor. You will get maybe, at, in, at one point you will be affected or you will also get that, uh, that COVID if they had it, but you will not know if you're getting it from clients. Remember, you also have families at home who are also uh, we come from work, go home, and you know mingle with our family members. So once you get this, your family is also affected. And once you go home, uh, being affected uh, with work, you also uh, mentally and uh, uh, socially you are being affected with the family. You will be told now you have to uh, self uh, isolate away from the family. Let's take the example of oxygen. We use oxygen for many things in hospitals. We use it in theater to do cesarean section. Uh, we use it in maternity when children are born, babies are born and they, they are not breathing well, we give them the oxygen. Mm -hmm. Now when we divert all the oxygen to treat COVID, what happens to the infant who needs oxygen? What happens in theater where we need to do a cesarean section? Basically you don't have it and so you can't do the cesarean, you can't resuscitate the dying baby because there is lack of oxygen. And that is an example of what's happening with all other services. When you think of doctors, if a district hospital or a county hospital has 10 doctors and you have, um, the, the, the hospital is overrun by COVID cases, you take the doctors to manage the COVID. So what happens to the doctor who was treating in maternity ward? What happens to the one who was treating in the children's ward? They are taken away and so those services suffer. So um, there is 
need basically i wish there was a way of fundraising separately for covid mm -hmm. and leaving resources that are there for the other medical services to be used for those other medical services mm -hmm. that has not happened mm -hmm. as we talk now i'm trying to look uh, at a situation where most of the nurses uh, are, are away due to covid there will be short shortage of staff and uh, also uh, service delivery will be affected remember now the nurses have to stretch and once you are stretching this means even the quality of care that you're giving to these clients is not uh, as quality as it is required because now you're trying to catch up or you're trying to meet the needs of the clients and you're tired and you're exhausted. Uh, another thing will mean now, if people want to go for their offs to rest, they are not able to because they have to, to, to cover those shifts that people are away uh, due to the COVID. Uh, another thing will be now, mentally people will be affected. You will now start uh, seeing nurses reacting, not because they want, but mentally they are they are not fit because they are exhausted, they have fatigue, and they really need this rest because rest is very important while working. Immaculate Ching, a 24-year-old lactating mother from Kibra, is attending a postnatal clinic with a two-month-old baby. She ensures that she takes all the COVID-19 precautions. I have to have a mask. I have to wash my hands when I get there. My temperature has to be taken. If the waiting area is packed, I have to wait outside and have to wait my turn. She shares her journey before giving birth. You couldn't just enjoy being pregnant like people used to go walk around and everything. So you have to be careful thinking in case I get sick, what happens? Do does my pregnancy get terminated? What ha what made, how do I cope with this coming from a slum area? The resources are really not there. Coming from this area, Kibra, is a blessing and also it can be difficult considering COVID, we're living in the COVID times. It was extra challenging because now you see we don't have sewage lines around here and uh, keeping that level of hygiene that is required is not easy because you have a lot of kids in a very small area so it is not the same as someone who's living in Kilimani this person has a gated a place There's their place is self-contained meaning they don't have to interact with somebody if they don't want to for me if I have to go to the shop I'll have to interact with people. Somebody might have coughed and while I'm passing, I touch this place. I have touched this uh, contaminated place. I do not know this because I do not know this, who did, who coughed or who might have not coughed. So, and if you're not careful, you've touched a surface, you come back home, you start eating or you touch your face, and you, you, you just get COVID just like that. Now, contact tracing becomes difficult because you don't know where or how you got it. Because if I have to go to the toilet, I don't have a toilet in my house, I have to walk to a toilet. I interact with people, others who don't even care about wearing a mask, they don't even care about hygiene. Much as I might be taking care of myself, I might still get it because somebody else is not playing their part. So. Coming from Kibra with COVID was very, very difficult. I remember there was even a time we were almost being put on a lockdown as people from Kibra because of the spiking numbers of infection that we had here. Statistics have shown that maternal mortality ratio in the slum population is high with COVID-19 Pregnant women, lactating mothers, and their children living in slums are at high risk. So it's stressful and you have to take it because now you're not only thinking about yourself, you're also thinking about the baby inside of you. The Kenyan government, through the Minister of Health, is working to ensure that everyone is vaccinated against COVID-19. However, the special group of pregnant women and lactating mothers seems to be in a dilemma regarding the vaccine. 
So they haven't given us enough information to know, is it safe for me while pregnant to go and get this job? Or is it safe once I have delivered to go and get this job? And if I get this job, what are the side effects of getting this job? Will it affect my milk supply? Because as a lactating mom, all you ever think about is, I shouldn't be stressed because stress will lower my, my milk supply. Milk supply means baby cries don't stop. So it, the government is not doing enough civic education to let us mothers or those who are already moms or first time moms and lactating moms know how safe is it for us to get this job. If it's safe enough or if there's still in there are still gray areas about getting this job so i feel unless you do a research on your own like go to who's uh, site read about what they have to say about the job you're literally in the dark we are literally in the dark on the other side of town i meet simfro sokinta almost six months pregnant and she's here at jacaranda maternity for her antenatal clinic this is her second born baby. When I ask her to compare the experience between the two pregnancies, she says this has been tough. Let me say this, uh, this pregnancy is very tough, especially now that um, uh, there's the pandemic. Uh, it's hard because um, one, we do not have enough information on how you are supposed to take care of yourself. We just try the uh, distance, mask, and you know you can't prevent yourself from moving around because also you need to be able to prepare for the baby financially. So it's been tough, and uh, sometimes you don't want to move. Just like Immaculate, she doesn't have enough information about the COVID-19 vaccine. She says it's uncertain since she's not only making the decision for herself, but her baby too. So you know, you're not sure what right decision to make, and you're not only making a decision for yourself you're doing it for the baby too. So, and some most, most hospitals, even when you go to the clinic, they'll tell you it's a personal choice. So you do not know how it borders or what you're supposed to do exactly. If it is a personal choice, do I have enough information so that I may know the kind of choice that I'm taking for the baby? Because then again, um, I don't think I've gone to a clinic where I've been told the only option is to take the vaccine or don't take the vaccine. Actually, I think most hospitals just avoid talking about it because maybe our attacking the results, to, you don't, they don't want you to blame them if anything happens. Mm -hmm. So we are living in very uncertain times. And uh, as for me, I think I've been living by the grace <laughs> because I can't say I've made the best decision because I do not know what the best decision is all about. The lack of information on the vaccine could definitely be putting to risk the lives of mothers and children as they are prone to COVID-19 infections. It is proven that antibodies developed by the mother can pass down to the unborn baby so that when the baby is born, that should they contract COVID and there's no reason to believe that that can't take place, that baby will be able to survive and do well because they have developed the antibodies necessary to counteract um, COVID. So they may have COVID, but they'll be able to survive through it. And that's very important. The vaccine protects against infection and the vaccine protects against severe, di against severe disease. Mm -hmm. We've seen now variants like Delta, where uh, some vaccinated people still get infected but we've not seen increase in deaths or severe disease. Mm -hmm. So for most of the cases, the vaccine will protect them from getting severe disease. Mm -hmm. It will protect them from dying. That applies across the board, whether they're infants or adults. Mm -hmm. The gap about vaccine information is said to have been brought about by the initial information that pregnant and lactating mothers were not among those that were supposed to be vaccinated. Because it was never tested on a pregnant woman, uh, there was that initial hesitancy. Should we give it to pregnant women? We don't know what will happen. If you give it to them, what about the unborn child? But slowly and surely, um, pregnant women, especially those in healthcare, decided, let us take this vaccine. So they were quote unquote the guinea pigs, isn't it? So a few of them took the vaccine, even if it had not been tested on pregnant women before. 
because they looked at the situation and said, I am pregnant, I work probably in the healthcare sector, I'm being exposed to COVID, I know that COVID in pregnancy is already high risk. So I'm already at a high risk. I can take my chances with the vaccine. So gradually a few, the brave ones started taking the vaccine. They were observed. And from the observation of those who took the vaccine, we noticed no, there was no increased risk of them having the vaccine, both in pregnancy and also soon after delivery, during lactation when they are breastfeeding. We have not been able to counter the misinformation mm -hmm. and the myths mm -hmm. and the safety issues. Mm -hmm. We've concentrated a lot on advocating for people to give us vaccines. I think now it is time to change that narrative. Mm -hmm.